Welcome back to the only series I record anymore, and probably for good reason. The Riverside Royals, for the first time in program history, are ranked number 24 in the nation, following two top 25 wins over some pretty decent teams in the form of a 90 overall two-lane and at Indiana. And things aren't going to be much different today. We're going to have a tall task ahead of us taking on the 91 overall Terps. Number 12 Maryland is a very, very good school. And once again, Lee Corso is picking against Riverside. You've been wrong the past two times. What is it? Fool me once. Fool me. Fool me. Can't get fooled again. No, that's uh, it was George Bush. But listen, we fooled him twice. We'll be set to fool him a third time. We have the number 10 scoring offense. And we have the number 81 total defense. Well, that's let's let's good. That's less good. Let's uh, not focus on that and focus on the good things. And the good things right now are right, we're, we've been just winning. It's nice. John Reese Plumley, who I guess he had three touchdowns still in the Heisman watch. Not sure where Adam Daniel is. You guys are starting to come around to Adam Daniel. I know a lot of you wanted to see our Riverside native Justin Bennett play a lot and maybe doesn't profile the best as a receiver because of his low release. But you see the size, the catching, the route running. It's tough to think that he wouldn't be a receiver, but the release is low. But also, maybe we move him to quarterback, but it's tough because Adam Daniel has been so good. It's been amazing in that role so far. He is an incredible passer, but he can also catch a little bit. But is that 87 throw power that's just a cannon that we haven't used before? So, I don't know. I, I think with as well as Adam Daniel is playing, there's simply no reason to even consider anybody else. As maybe one day, we'll have a player of the week for the entirety of the NCAA. Top 25 looks like this. Bama, USC, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State. Nothing has changed. Notre Dame up one. Florida State up one, Washington up one, Clemson up one. Everyone's kind of moving up one as who dropped out of the top 10? I can't tell. Uh, LSU lost to Arizona State. Tough stuff, but we are in the first or for the first time ever ranked so it's great to be here. However, with a loss to Maryland, that all could change. Not messing around today. We're bringing out the blackout unis. I need the castle to be rocking here at Royal Field. I need the Riverside faithful to cheer us on and really lead us to the promised land. We have a really, really, really good passing offense. And hopefully we're able to uh, show more of that here today. This could be a nationally televised game, by the way, as these are two top 25 teams playing each other. And of course, that's obviously the first time that's ever been the case for us as we've never been ranked before. So this is probably the biggest game in program history. We have home field advantage. The Terps are trying to come in and beat us. Trying to take the castle. This siege is not going to happen today. This Royals team is going to be ready, raring to go. Starting with the football. Let's score. Could be a slugfest. I want to get Reggie Gonzalez involved off the rip. And we have decent blocking. Here's the thing. I feel like a lot of you who are newer to college football look at like four yards per carry and go that's really good but it isn't so much in college football like yeah it is good to to run in between the tackles and things like that and and pick up the you know the hard fought yardage but if you want to be an elite running back at the collegiate level you got to be well above five yards per carry to start kind of being considered in that upper echelon of running backs as that safety is going to come up both safeties are going to come up 
I want to change things. I don't really like the personnel on the field. A little bit worried about this. I think... I think maybe putting Gonzalez on a swing and kind of getting that football out quickly could be the best move. That's what we're going to do. Let's go, Reggie. Nice move. Gonzalez has space. And he gets 17 yards. Maybe could have even had more after the catch there. Did a real good job of making somebody miss. And then kind of ran behind another player. Kind of expected contact at a different time. Made a back juke. But it's still a good gain, nevertheless. Second and 10. Is it crazy to run? I think so. Looks like it's going to be zone coverage. I think we might have Michael Ham in a position to win, like, nearly immediately. We got him over the top. Michael Ham, Daniel's favorite target. Adam Daniel hits him in stride. Ham just doesn't quite have the speed to get to the end zone. But that is a huge play. No safety help. Michael Ham's taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one every time. We know Adam Daniel has the arm to get it to him deep down the field. And that's becoming probably the best combination in all of college football. I'll say it. For a team that's ranked in the top 25 for the first time ever, yes, they probably have the best quarterback-receiver combo. As this time, Adam Daniel finds Corey Warren for a fresh set of downs. First and goal for what looks to be a very, very good Riverside offense to start this game. Probably don't want Humphrey in motion there. Let me go ahead and change things. Get Daniel back. Get it to Reggie Gonzalez, and he's just walking into the end zone for the touchdown. Great way to cap off a fantastic drive. Reggie Gonzalez played a pretty big part in it, but of course, it's that big Adam Daniel to Michael Ham connection that has been so good for us in these first few weeks of the season. Great stuff from the Royals. I'm liking it. Iowa State, the Battle of Iowa. I forget the actual name for the rivalry, but big in-state matchup. The Cyclones take out the Hawkeyes. And some really good games going on. UCF could try to upset Alabama. Oregon holds on against unranked Colorado. And Washington holds on against unranked Ole Miss. Pretty good week of games so far. Rakeem Jarrett, that's the impact player. Last game had a catch for 10 yards. Yeah, he's a beast. Now, I know our defense is not the best. We allow a lot of yards. But we're going to have to be really good today. Because this is the best offense we faced this season. And probably will face this season. Alabama was probably just as good, if not better. Same deal with Florida. This is a 97 overall offense. This is a really, really good high-powered attack. As we're trying to get out there with Hall... The hall monitor can't make the tackle. Joseph Brown eventually does. But in order to contain Robbie Houston, we're going to go ahead and tell our defensive line and our backers, play the quarterback. That's going to be a really important adjustment to make if we're going to have any success in this game. Because clearly this offense is going to feature a lot of quarterback runs. A lot of the quarterback lining up in the shotgun with the tailback behind him. We're going to have to stop that. You know, probably going to see some pistol. And, uh, you know college formations like that quick throw to the back out of the backfield Washington's gonna get thrown yep that's exactly what happened Jackson was as well we're not gonna get a stop today I mean we are just outmatched this is gonna be ugly it's gonna come down to whoever gets the football last I think it's a good pitch James trying to save a touchdown just manhandled Eight-yard touchdown run for Isaiah Jacobs. Yeah, uh, that set the tone for the game. It's going to be maybe slow and methodical Riverside drives with a big play involved. And then for Maryland, it's going to be chunk play after chunk play after chunk play. It's going to be a slugfest. Okay, awesome. I mean, once again, they have nobody lined up on Michael Hamm. We're going to throw it for him. Michael Ham open up the seam. Ham has space. And it's another massive gain for Michael Ham. They're just not covering him. They are just not covering him. Good throw from Daniel, of course. And that is a near 60-yard completion to start this drive. And it's a very peculiar approach from Maryland, which is, you know, not covering our biggest threat. It's a little bizarre. Second and 10. 
Don't really love the options. We're going to take off with Adam Daniel here. And he is grabbed down after six. Third and four. It's imperative that we come away with a touchdown every single time we touch the ball. Wouldn't have been a terrible idea to run on third and or, or second down there. Uh, like a, a more traditional design run. Read option again. Daniel, good power. Gets only two though. Could have been worse. It's going to be fourth and two. Can't take our points here. Absolutely cannot do it. Phil Triplett's coming in. In the Willie Briggs roll. Well, fullback dive. Triplett is stopped. Great way to shoot the gap, make the tackle. Phil Triplett's got a long way to go before he's up to Willie Briggs status. That is a really, really bad that we didn't score a touchdown there. We're, we're not going to make a tackle today. Uh, that much is obvious. This could even be a touchdown. He's going down the field with space. Hart in pursuit. And Allen Hart will save a touchdown. Good heart on that play to chase him down. We're just not going to be able to make a tackle today. It's, it's very obvious. We're just going to have to play hyper-aggressive. Sam Brown is basically thrown into the earth. We have to play hyper-aggressive and just... Just really overplay gaps and things like that. And uh, try to get to spots first. I think we're going to end up giving up a lot of yards because of it. But we could also, you know, somehow manage to stop them. So hopefully he wasn't grabbed down by the face mask there. Two rushes for 70 yards after a two-yard gain. Interesting stat line. Seems like Maryland is a powerhouse now. What's going on here? Lobbed up! And the catch is made by Fleming. Maryland will take a 14-7 lead. Yeah, that was something. Just a perfect throw. Safety was never going to have a chance. Cornerback got beat. Oh, it's going to be a long day here in Riverside. Some more zone defense. Running a lot of that today. Man, I can't believe we had a 60-yard throw to Michael Hamm. And we didn't score on the drive. Just devastating. I really do think you have to go for two there. Or have to go for the uh, first down. Is Adam Daniels got like 80 trucking. I don't think he's ever actually trucked over somebody. We've seen Andy Byers do it. I guess this is a real good team. But we, you, can't, you can't fault the Riverside offense for going for it when... We've seen what the Maryland offense can do so far. Quick throw to the outside. We'll take the Corey Warren first down. Just move the chains. Don't have to get too aggressive in that situation. We just want to keep the drive alive. That's a great route. Kind of a natural pick there as well. And Corey Warren has another first down for us. Just really, really crisp. Check this out. It's about seven yards of separation. And then he's kind of blocked further down the field by Elgin Collins. That is awesome. Second and 13. Who wants to make a play? Michael Ham Takes seven. Makes it a more manageable third down. I'm comfortable checking down there. I know you can make a tighter window throw and maybe have better results, but they could also be worse results. It's the end of the first quarter. It's pretty much always going to be fourth down territory or four down territory, so we are going to have four downs to convert. And, uh, I mean, we're going to have to. We we need so badly to score every time we touch the ball. Wow. Michael Ham, crazy to fight off the press. I thought he was going to get by. I thought it was going to be a pretty much clean release right by him. No. But Ham does a good job to kind of power through, get open enough, and make that catch. Gonzalez up the middle. It's a great run by Reggie. Second and one. We're going to run with Adam Daniel. Blockers out in front. That's, that's not bad. It's not terrible. Had some options as well. But like the idea of blockers being out in front, potentially being able to bob and weave and pick up a really big gain. But that'll work right there. First and ten. Daniel can't seem to figure out this Maryland defense on read option. They, they're they shutting like both options down. 
which is making it very difficult to have that be a viable option. So we're going to have to figure out different ways of moving the football. And maybe we'll continue to throw to Corey Warren. Is that a pretty big game so far? Four catches for 43 yards. I think three first downs as well. And on third and two, I'd love to be able to run the football. But do I trust my offensive line against their defensive line? Probably not. Blocks look pretty good, though. Reggie pretty strong and is short of the end zone. Try a read option here with Triplet into the game. They played him. Adam Daniel up the middle. Touchdown. And we are right back in it. Going to tie the football game. Here's the problem. Maryland gets the football to start the second half. So, we're just in a tough spot. Utah has defeated number two USC. A top five upset in what has already been a really good week of college football. USC is going to be flying down. What a win for Utah. Trojans shocked. Another run. It's just a ton of space. It's a good tackle by Joseph Brown, you know. Our, our front seven is just getting manhandled. We got to try and mix it up. 4-6 in real life is a great uh, defense to stop the run. But it really does mean that your linebackers have to make plays. And it might work out. It might work out. The entire idea with 4-6 is you keep the linebackers clean when the defensive line eat up blocks, and then it's just one-on-one -on -one tackling opportunities as we make another one-on-one. -on -one. I like... If this team's going to start playing well, I'm all in. I'm all in. I mean, we, we need that to happen, obviously, because if we can't tackle, we're not going to win the game. Not even going to have a chance. Oh, we met him right at the catch point, but good hands to hold on. That was a really, really critical critical down and they convert quick throw and luckily incomplete Hart got beat accurate throw and that's a touchdown that's why pressing is dangerous but I also don't want to give him too much separation maybe we'll uh put Brown over there give him some help false start gotta be a false start hey there we go we'll take all the help we can get tight end in motion we're gonna switch here Prefer this anyway, Hall, with the running back. And it's going to be a, actually a quarterback run. Washington, we ran by him. It's just changed the direction so tough for me sometimes. I do strafe, but it just doesn't it doesn't do it sometimes. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't register depending on what direction you're going. There's no just changing on a dime like the quarterback can do with the ball. Really annoying. But he was going to get stiff-armed anyway. So, you know, what do you, what do you want? Wow, he's going to break that tackle. It's going to be a touchdown, Maryland. Just nothing we can do, really. It's a reality. Nothing we can do. This is really going to have to be a completely separate team, different team in the second half if we're going to have any type of a chance. We're going to throw for Elgin Collins, and we just couldn't get it back shoulder. Couldn't work back to the football. Thought we maybe had something, but kind of threw into coverage in the end. that slant open it's a good ball Corey Warren nice catch moves to the chains again he's been our chain mover today he's been real good I mean I don't even want to say that Aaron Duvall was that before he graduated last season we don't really have that you know typical just chain mover guy I mean it's, sometimes it is John Humphreys should be a good route <sighs> DB played it without even turning around Adam Daniel only three incompletions and plenty of yards so far. We need Ham to carry some of these options vertically. And I think Humphreys will be my main look. They took it away though. One-on-one -on -one matchup. Gonzalez, big block down the field. But we're going to take off with Daniel and secure the first down. Don't want to risk an errant throw. I like Gonzalez, but I thought the DB could have played both of them. I didn't really like the timing. I think that's a much safer decision. And this has to be the last possession of the first half, I think. Otherwise, we're basically asking Maryland to go up by by two scores in the third quarter. I just, I can't have that happen. Read option. I need them to play this badly. 
There, there it is. Just slide. Third and inches works. I trust that Phil Triplett can get the yardage that we need on back-to-back -back plays. I know he was short, barely, when we tried this on fourth and one, or fourth and two, rather. But third and inches, running this twice in a row, I think it's a guarantee, and don't even need the fourth down. Second and three, just over 30 seconds to play here in the first half. Gonzalez up the middle. It's a good enough game. We're actually going to go hurry up here. And do we try a toss? Kind of don't like our odds of getting that. Let's get to the line, Daniel. Let's get outside. And we get sacked. Oh. Couldn't fake him out. Right there is just a situation where I need to call a timeout and get a play I'm more comfortable with rather than whatever the heck that was. Didn't do it, and we obviously paid the price. It is second and goal. Humphreys can't catch it. You gotta catch that. You gotta catch it. I mean, that really is a huge catch there because, or a huge drop even. If he catches that, it's third and one into the end zone, and we just didn't get it. Zone defense. We make that throw. We're going to run with Daniel. We got bumped. Daniel powers into the end zone. Touchdown. That got a little bit dicey, but Daniel's got the wheels, and we steal a touchdown. That got a little bit weird because we got bumped by, was that Phil Triplett out of the backfield? That could have been really, really bad. Thankfully for Riverside, it will be a 21-21 game. A lot of offense in this first half. It'll be tied up going into the second half. Maryland gets ball. We need to figure out how to stop them. It's going to come down to a, a lucky play, I think, because on a down-to-down -down basis, and we've had them on third down a couple times, but it sure is tough. They get a lot of yards every time they snap that football. And that is the first half. We just have to tackle better. I don't know. Ooh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Conservative tackling. Do we think we're going to get beat deep? We're going to go balance for now. And yeah. Hopefully, with those adjustments, we tackle better in the second half. Because the big hits, they're not fumbling anyway. We force like two fumbles ever in this series. Maybe even one. So, just make the tackle, and we'll have a chance to be in this game, I think. We just need some guys to make plays as well. See, that's it's not good. But it is a tackle in space. That is good. Second and inches, will they run the ball? Probably. We're going to shoot this A-gap. Hall in the backfield. Can't make the tackle. Brown can't make the tackle. Clemens in pursuit. We got bumped up, but somehow can't tackle him. Come back and make the play, but it's a 43-yard gain. Jacobs broke two and a half tackles on the play. There's one. There's two. And we bumped up against him, but we couldn't tackle him. I know it's, oh, that's your fault. You overran him. If I'm right there that we literally touch him... A tackle animation should trigger. I, I don't know what to tell you. That's just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. I'm sure you will. Brown chasing after the quarterback. He's going to run. Oh, big tackle. He grabbed him by the face mask. Stop doing that. First and 10 from the 11. Basically an extra yard to work with. It's going to be a run. Oh, it's going to be a quarterback keeper. And he is just a beast. Saved a touchdown with Joseph, uh, Joseph Brown, but uh, it's second and one from the two. It's not a great spot to be. We're just going to have to go big here and basically commit to the run. If it's a pass, we're screwed. But you know what? If it's a run, we're probably also screwed. So it's not a big spot. They're not a good spot to be. It missed the tackle. If we don't tackle, we're going to lose the game. We were right in the gap. Made the hit. Didn't matter. Touchdown, Terps. Second and two. My absolute favorite down and distance to take a shot off play action. We're going to check down, though. Listen, I saw Humphreys over the top. 
I just didn't trust it. But we don't, you know, do anything positive there anyway. I know it's like, mm, throw Humphreys, throw Humphreys, throw Humphreys. I hear you guys. I really do. But I just, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work out a lot of the time for me. And you know what? When I threw it earlier, he dropped it. Tough catch, kind of. But sometimes I like to go to the fast receivers because I feel like there's bigger play potential. He genuinely has, you know, some of the best hands in the NCAA in Division I college football in the nation, right? Throw that post. Michael Ham didn't catch it. Oh, Michael. Third and six. Who wants to make a play? John Humphreys. Nice catch. Let's go, John. Oh, the chat, the comments rejoice. Oh, their favorite player of all time, John Humphreys, got a catch. Wow. Throw the backside of that. It's Elgin Collins. Nice move. Broke a tackle, and that is another first down. I, Adam Daniel maybe has like 300 passing yards, 244. No touchdowns, though. Does have a couple on the ground. Barrett Reed checks into the game. That's pretty good speed. We win over the top. Let's throw it up. Daniel dropped it in. They're calling it incomplete. How is that incomplete? How is that incomplete? Oh, he didn't get two feet down or one foot even. How did he not? That looks like a touchdown. I mean, the left foot. I mean, it, it is a touchdown. Except for the fact that it's actually, it's floating. The left foot, like breaking the laws of physics never actually hits the ground. Like, do you see how there's the shadow underneath it? So it doesn't make any sense that's not a touchdown, but if I were to challenge, it would not be overturned. Seen that plenty of times. Pretty frustrating, but honestly, nothing can be done on that. Daniel breaks attack. Ugh. Got pushed out of bounds. Ran into that one. Are they double teaming John Humphreys? why third and 14 quick throw and that's going to be intercepted we were under pressure as you can see daniel's on the ground didn't really feel like there was anywhere to go with the ball there went for the closest guy good play and that even down by a touchdown could be enough to do it here in the third quarter you're gonna throw it's wide open of course in the flat I'm not sure what we're going to do. It's going to be, uh, you know, sounding like a broken record in the second half. Because we're going to keep trying and trying different things and having a very small amount of success, if that. Brown, please. Sam Brown, please. Thankfully, Greg Hall's there and helps him out. Quick throw and complete to Fleming. <laughs> Hart trailing behind again. Okay, that's going to be intercepted by Alan Hart. We got a chance. Oh my goodness, Alan Hart came right back in. So there was some confusion on that because I didn't know who I was switching on to. So it kind of went the wrong way, but Alan Hart weaved back in, made the interception, and suddenly this Riverside team has life. Daniel under pressure. Need a block from Ham down the field. Daniel breaks a tackle. 20 yards by the quarterback. Big gain for Adam Daniel. Exactly what we needed. Big time throw. Corey Warren up the seam on the skinny post. Another near 30-yard completion. His seventh catch on the game. Corey Warren is having a performance. Second and two. Throw across formation. It's Corey Warren. His 10th catch of the game. Or an 8th catch. Okay, I thought I, I thought he had 9 before. Alright, well. A yard shy of 100. That would be big. We're trying to do a lot of passing right now. Going a bit one-dimensional. Slant open. It's John Humphreys! Touchdown! 
There he is. First touchdown of the game for Adam Daniel through the air. Goes to everyone's favorite, John Humphreys. Listen, I'd love to, to have him score a touchdown every play if it were possible. Sometimes I don't see it. 28-28. I don't know why Maryland decided to throw the ball. It was completely brain dead. They've destroyed us on the ground the entire game. But now things are tied. I feel like there's life. We need another stop from the defense, though. Gotta have it. Throw it. Throw it. Houston trying to run. He's sacked. Big time play for Craig Jackson. Oh, we need more of those. Why do they keep trying to throw the ball? That's initial pressure from Kerr, by the way. He made that all happen. True freshman Marcus Kerr made that play happen. Love that. Second and 16. Momentum for Riverside. Boone in motion. It's a run. Please make the tackle. Oh, it's, all right, that works. That works. That might take us to the end of the third quarter. Third and seven. We're allowing almost 10 yards per carry to that running back. Two for two on third down. It's a major play. Third and seven. Once again, they're going to send a guy in motion. Need to make a stop. Quick throw. Hole! Big tackle! Jackson short! And on fourth and three, they will punt the football back for the first time. Reggie Gonzalez, nice move. He's to the outside. Had a ton of potential on that one. So much, but it only goes for nine. It's not a bad play. Just thought we had daylight. Not quite there. Gonzalez is going to get it on back-to-back -back plays, though. Well, that's a nice, nice, uh, nice way to make a guy miss. I thought that was a face mask. Looked like he got dragged down by the face mask at the end there, but I suppose not. Thorn into the backfield, by the way. All right. Taking off with Daniel. He's got good speed. Adam Daniel back towards midfield. Of course, sliding. We get pretty aggressive with him, but that's a slide situation. Adam Daniel makes the wise, wise decision to go down and avoid contact. Tight end into the backfield now. More read option, quarterback keeper, nowhere to go. Daniel loses four. You know, it's interesting because sometimes that, that play call where we run like a, a second or even third and long screen, sometimes that works. But sometimes it doesn't. Quick throw. Humphreys. Big catch. And it's fourth and one. 69 yards for Humphreys on the day. Nice. I think we have to go for it. I agree. It's got to be Phil Triplett time. We were held short earlier. We need the yardage now. Gonzalez in motion. Triplett up the middle. He's got space. Triplett. A big, big gain of eight. On fourth down to move the chains this time. Triplett staying in the game. Safety coming up. Up the middle. It's a great tackle. The clock is in a weird situation right now. I almost want to score as quickly as possible. Because I think Maryland will probably end up scoring pretty quickly. So we would have a chance. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We need those points first. Obviously. Daniel getting out of the pocket. We got space. Daniel got the block. Look at the block. Is that Barrett Reed in the end zone? Doing the dirty work. Adam Daniel, third touchdown of the game on the ground. Those wheels are incredibly valuable. That's an amazing block by Barrett Reed, by the way. 10 out of 10. Doing the dirty work. Looking like Elgin Collins there. And Riverside has taken the lead. For the first time since the first quarter. Since the opening possession. Back ahead. This time, 35-28. Just over four minutes to play. Defense needs to stop. Jackson just got completely thrown off. And look at this. Over 500 total yards for Riverside. Lemon's coming up. It's a quick throw. Fleming, broken tackle. Wow. It's a run. Just contain it. Just contain it. That's all we need to do there, Greg. Second and seven. 
to run right back up the middle. Hall got blocked out of the picture. Clemens can't make the tackle. Hart does, but it's a big 25 for Isaiah Jacobs, continuing his great day. Great day from him. Second and eight. I really need you guys here. Is this a run? Oh, it is. Boone, I see, he just crushed us. Like, I just don't understand. I don't know. The quarterback held the ball for a really long time. I felt like I was in a really good position to make the play. And then it's just as he gets the handoff, we're too late. And he cuts out. Ugh. Just bad timing. Do we need to play slower? If the quarterback keeps that, that's probably a great play for us, but he didn't. And it's first and ten. We're going to blitz everybody. Getting aggressive. Cross formation. Big tackle, Jarrell Dawson. This still might be a stop for this team. I mean, there, there's space on the field. We just, uh, we need somebody to make a big play. Maybe eat up a block with Hall. Let James get in there. Get to the outside. Jackson, huge tackle. Third and ten now. What do you do here if you're Maryland? They're going to run the ball. Hall can't make the tackle. Brown can't make the tackle, and it's a first down Maryland. You've got to be kidding me. Penny Boone is averaging 17 yards per carry. Oh, we had two big plays on first and second down, and it, it doesn't even matter. They ran on third and 10 and got it easily. Hall, please, it's going to be a touchdown, Parker. 16-yard touchdown, second touchdown run for the fullback today. And in all likelihood, things will be tied at 35. A minute and 41 remain. Riverside still has three timeouts. And a chance to win at home. Defend the castle. Get the win here in Riverside. Adam Daniel, we need a Heisman moment. 141 on the clock. You got your weapons. You got, you got time. You got timeouts. And you got a controller that doesn't work. I was wondering why I couldn't freaking move there. Great start. We're going to start with the screen. They just played it pretty well. They continue to play it pretty well. Just like the... Just like the idea of getting, you know, one of our biggest playmakers in space with the football, especially where he's so lethal. Throw up the seam, though. Corey Warren dropped the ball. That's the one time he's going to drop the ball today. On a potential game-winning drive. Third and ten. Same coverage, different result. It's a Corey Warren first down and more. 25 yards, huge play on third down. We got the same look against the same play and thankfully a very different result. Warren continues his big game, making up for the mistake on second down. Show me man coverage. It's not. It's not. Daniel, just slide. Really wanted to throw that wheel because we had everything going to the left. And then it was going to be Reggie Gonzalez, hopefully one-on-one -on -one against maybe a linebacker. And we have the arm with Adam Daniel to get the ball really far down the field. I thought that was going to be perfect. Unfortunately, did not work out like I thought it might. Daniel, big throw. Ham, big drop. Still not into field goal range. Ball sitting right on the 50. I'm being tempted with a quick throw to Javon Johnson. Got to do it. Big catch, Javon Johnson. I know we had the clock stoppage for the first down. We're calling a timeout. We're getting our guys with a little bit more stamina. We need a few more yards to get into field goal range. And of course, Maryland has all of their timeouts. I'm not sure with a random college kicker. We're hitting a nice kick. But Daniel down the sideline, 17 yard run. No one played the quarterback. Adam Daniel over 130 yards on the ground. Three touchdowns, Maryland, no answer. Everything to the right. I need a block there, you slow piece of... Timeout. I still don't feel comfortable settling for a field goal here. I, I, I know how this game works. I know it. Don't trust it. Daniel on the run. Adam Daniel, got to outrun some guys. Got some blocks! He's going to be short! Oh my goodness. We're going to hurry up because the clock's not going to stop. We're going to save that timeout. We're going to try to get in here. Six seconds. First and goal. Here's a snap. Gonzalez up the middle. Touchdown. Riverside takes the lead with five seconds to play. 
Reggie Gonzalez finds the end zone again. What a finish to this game. Riverside game winning drive. Adam Daniel, big time plays, dealt with a couple big drops, but got it done on the ground. And it's gonna take a miracle for Maryland. We're gonna squib kick it, only five seconds to play. And they need a touchdown. Two seconds. It'll be a shot to the end zone if they even have the arm. They'd be better off running the ball, by the way. Based on how we played today, I would be worried if they ran the ball. A throw? I'm not sure they're going to have the arm to reach the end zone. Blitzing with Washington. Get that football away. Houston sacked by Chandler. Game over. The Royals come back to win. What a game. One of the toughest games of the series. Their big time player, Jarrett, continued to not play any impact. To be honest, like they didn't really throw the ball too much, but Tim Washington locked down that game. Adam Daniel, of course, is your player of the game. 356 yards through the air. Got 150 on the ground, four total touchdowns. What a victory for Riverside. I think the biggest win in program history, without a doubt. Top 25 against a top 25. They're number 12 in the nation. I know we beat, what, number 10 Louisiana last year. They weren't nearly as good as this team, and this will elevate us in the rankings. You'd figure quite a bit. Yes, it is at home, but the Royals are starting out 3-0 with three wins over top 25 teams. Whether they're all still top 25 is not something we got to talk about, but at the time, now three top 25 wins. Adam Daniel, when is he going to start getting talked about under Heisman consideration. Yes, I know he plays in the Mountain West. These are incredible numbers against top competition. Put some respect on Adam Daniel's name. What a victory. What a victory. I mean, and Adam Daniel, man, I think he probably continues to make these thumbnails, but he's been the MVP. 356 yards and a touchdown, and then on the ground, averaging 6.9 per carry. Nice. 145 yards, three touchdowns. Gonzalez, good game from him. Two scores. And then receiving, Corey Warren led the team in catches, had 124 yards. Touchdown for John Humphreys, and then four for 120, or 120 for Michael Hamm. A couple other the receivers getting involved a little bit. And then defensively, of course, it's going to be a 10-tackle day for Greg Hall. That's just what he does. I can't believe our defense got stops when they did. A couple tackles for loss, Craig Jackson, Greg Hall, and one for Adrian Chandler on the game-winning sack. Craig Jackson and Greg Hall also picking up sacks in the process. And a big interception for Allen Hart that kind of kick-started everything. Showing some heart out there. What a game. It doesn't get any better than that. Coach Dengus now level 15, by the way. Doesn't really get much better than that. Of course, we're going into kitchen sink. 100 extra points to whatever prospect we desire or recruit per week. Amazing, amazing ability to have. And what I'm going to do because of that is I'm going to take some points off some players in order to kind of get ahead on, on some others. So Jared James, we're going to go down to 450 here. Andy Harris, maybe 450 as well. Juco player, I mean, I don't even think anyone's going after him. Andy Harris, I mean, he'd be a good pickup. I don't really anticipate him playing a huge impact. Might even redshirt when he gets here, by the way. And we'll use these extra points to get some big guys. Ronald Rogers would be huge. Kyle Smith would be quite big as well. Eric Smith, too. John Holt's a Juco guy, but he's also really good. And the, uh, the rest of these guys are newly added to the board, so I can't even put any points on them. But I do want to do 600 to somebody. McNair's only a 69. I feel like we're kind of wasting points on him. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get back in on McNair. Only USC's offered him a scholarship. We could gain up some ground, but I'm not sure. I think he's just going to end up going to USC. Yeah, I'm going to take him off the board. I think it's the right call. We can use those points on other guys. Mike Johnson, Jared James, 600, why not? And we'll just see where that gets us. We, I, I really have been trying to bolster the offensive line. I know it's a big problem, but I'm going after some pretty big offensive line recruits. I know we focused a lot on athletes in the first couple years, but it's very hard to get, you know, some of the best recruits still because we're not that big of a program yet. Oh, week four is a buy, so I guess we'll do that in this episode as well. That'll be a really big recruiting week. Ooh, and these big offensive linemen are ready to visit. 
Kyle Smith as well. We're going to try and schedule those as quickly as possible. And I believe Adam Daniel was the NCAA Player of the Week. Okay. Let's check that out. Players of the Week. Adam Daniel, freshman. Our first NCAA Player of the Week ever. And I, I think it was warranted. Also, what is the new ranking for Riverside? Let's see. We got to be moving up at least a little bit. USC dropped to 10 after losing to unranked Utah, who is now ranked. Where's Riverside? Number 20. We moved up four spots. So you're telling me we're 3-0. and Iowa was higher. That's fine. Arizona State beat UTSA. They're 2-0. Maryland is still above us is the biggest confusing thing ever because we are 3-0. They are now 1-1, one and, one and we just beat them. How do you have a top 25 where you continue to have Maryland, we beat, ranked above us? I get that it was a close game. I get that there's more conference prestige in the ACC. But we beat them. Of course, sitting atop the Mountain West, West Division. What about the Mountain? The controller continues to be kind of buggy for me. Uh, the Mountain Division... Air Force is the only undefeated team, but they've only played one game. Let's uh, let's go ahead and schedule some of these. I mean, are these going to be competitive visits? Because they're both tackles, but they also play on the same offensive line. So I kind of don't know about that. But a lot of guys want Ronald Rogers. So the big ones for Ronald Rogers, right? San Diego State, Cal. Those are really the teams that are involved. I want to do right before San Diego State, I believe. So if we do the visit with him versus Fresno State, we'll get plus 700. And then potentially take the lead before he even visits San Diego State. Now we could wait like far down the line, but we're trying to get him locked out as quickly as possible. So I think while UNLV kind of makes some sense here, I think Fresno State should be the one. Before I do that, let's go ahead and see who Eric Smith could go to. The only other one is Ohio State, who we're actually gaining traction on. Let's schedule this one first. It's going to be 500 for everything here. Um, so we might as well do this one as soon as possible. He's week 14 to Ohio State. Let's hope that he doesn't even make it that far. Let's do it against Colorado State. And then Ronald Rogers, I will go to Fresno State. No competitive, uh, competitive visits here for Aaron Garcia. Looks like we're just going to get him. But let's go ahead and schedule him pretty much as soon as possible. Against an actual team, we'll do Colorado State. Jared James is UCLA. We're pretty much about to get him anyway. He's not even visiting UCLA, so as soon as possible. Do Colorado State as well. And then Kyle Smith. We've taken the lead over Georgia State, which is big. And when is he scheduled to visit them? Never. So we'll do him as soon as possible too. Complimentary visit with James as well, so let's go ahead and make that happen. And now it's time to take some players off our board. We will not be getting this 6'7", 5-star outside linebacker Jacob Dunbar, that's for sure. Took the lead on John Holt, Juco product. I want to save a lot of these points because we have a lot of new players that were added to the board here. And we're going to have updates on how close we are. JJ Swain, we're not going to get. Take him off. Luke Tucker, we could have a shot at. Receiver. No scholarships offered, so we could potentially get him. Eric Dixon is gone. Let me take all the guys we have no shot. Just straight off. So we really need to find out how good some of these players are. So I need to take points off of somebody that doesn't really matter too much. It's probably going to be Matt Montgomery. Let's go down to like 50 or something. Andy Harris is the one where I really shouldn't need to put too many points in. We're the only team that's offered him a scholarship. And it doesn't really matter if he doesn't decide to commit. It, it really doesn't. Ryan Bradley's a running back I'm interested in. 92 speed. 
seems pretty well balanced. He's just a fine player. He'd be a good backup to have. I really don't need to put that many points into him. Because again, it doesn't really matter if we get him or not. Fighting with Syracuse for Jamie Fowler. Very close. Only two teams that have offered him a scholarship. He's a real interesting player. I think... I don't even know if I want to say. Because he's like... He doesn't really look like a running back. He's a receiver or a quarterback, I think. He has 90 speed, good arm, real accurate, not the strongest in the world. Route running is good, catching is good, and 90 speed. Jamie Fowler is someone I'm interested in, but not overwhelmingly so. Do 450. We really just need these points for scouting right now to try and steal some guys. It's not going to be Roger Wilson. Plus five gem for Derek Thomas. What is he? A little slow. But a good running back overall. Any scholarships so far? No, we're going to offer him then. Plus three, ge or not gem, but plus three for Alex Jones. I need some of these linemen to be gems. Plus four, that, that's not a gem, but that works. Absolutely want to get him. We need to put in a lot of points. Need you to be a gem. Plus four, 69 center. Not too bad. It's worth offering a scholarship for. Put some points into him. Ooh, Luke Tucker's a plus four receiver. 88 speed, 84 catching, 88 route running. This is a really, really good receiver that no one's really interested in at the moment. So that's a receiver I'm actually interested in recruiting. Kind of done all I can for right now with the points. So we're going to leave things as they are. Had to move things around quite a bit. But this is where I am comfortable um you know coming out of the the bye week so i'm gonna try to add some more guys hopefully pipeline guys because they're just easier to get so let's get through the bye week our uh ranking could change by the way but we're gonna have some big visits and it might not only be those guys that are scheduled right now for colorado state as we could conceivably add a couple more guys over this next bye week who are now interested enough in visiting so we'll see what happens keep you posted obviously Ooh, OC, DC leveled up. And, okay, so it's just the same guys who are scheduled to visit. Nobody is newly interested. And Colorado State is 0-3. We are also into the top 20, number 18. And they're already labeling Colorado State a cupcake. Our first ever game was against Colorado State in the FBS. And now, our second ever week being ranked... Our first ranked Mountain West matchup is against Colorado State. The offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator upgrades. Let's start with the OC. Is there anything for blocking? Carrying, I don't care about. Blocking's up here. We're going to be able to do that pretty soon. But let's, uh, let's completely upgrade the running game. I think that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. And then for the defensive coordinator... Block shedding is real important. I like that a lot. But is that most important? Zone coverage, I could kind of care less about. I know that sounds crazy. We don't run a ton of zone. Ooh, having, having the plus four man coverage and plus five press could be huge. But we also, we really need to start, start shedding blocks. So we're going to focus on that for right now. So we've taken an overwhelming lead on Aaron Garcia right now. And he's scheduled to visit today. So what I'm going to do is pretty much take all my points off of him. This is probably someone who commits after the game via the bet. I think it'd be a waste of points. Ooh, Steve Lewis. 71 overall corner. Like this. It's going to be a scholarship. Also, Jersey City trying to build up that New Jersey pipeline. No scholarship. Steve Lewis could be someone we get. Also added a junior college corner. Wow, he's amazing. Micah Hodges. 94 speed, 88 man end zone, 87 press. Would love to get him. And I think it's possible as well. Show me a gem with one of these offensive linemen. There's one. Plus six gem up to a 70. Which for some reason is more appealing than someone who's just plus one to 70. The points are big too. There's a plus nine gem. His name's Anthony Miner, but that is a major steal. 
Oh, that's amazing. Instant scholarship and New Jersey. Big points, 600. All right, so that is going to do it for this episode, though, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This was a really fun one. I think this is going to be one of the bigger and better episodes of the series when we all, you know, we'll look back on it whenever it will come to an end. But hopefully that's not for a long time. We're only in season four. We've only been ranked for two games ever. And yeah, a lot of you were suggesting that if we win the Mountain West like two years in a row and it starts to get too easy, a move to the Pac-12 is not out of the question, obviously. But that will do it for me here today. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud.